the hell is no joke? Hello, hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Sophia and today we're covering all things running. We're gonna talk about how to get started, my own personal journey, what I've learned along the way, my tips, my running essentials, nutrition, just all the things. So hopefully you can find something here that's helpful for you. We have a lot of things to cover, so let's get into it. I thought it would be nice to start off by sharing a little bit about my own journey and how I went from a heavy smoker to now a long distance runner. If you're new here, I was a heavy smoker for over a decade and I quit cold turkey on January 29th of 2023. If you're curious and wanna hear more about that journey, then I will link the video here in the cards. Even when I was a heavy smoker, I was still very active. There was always some sort of cardio involved, but obviously smoking and high intensity training does not mesh well at all. I didn't realize how much smoking was holding me back in my overall athletics until I quit. It was the best decision I could have ever made for myself and for my health. I just wanted to share a little bit about my fitness background because I do believe that it really helped establish my aerobic base for running since I was already very active. That said, it was something I did for my cardiovascular health, but by no means did I ever enjoy it. The reason I even got into it was because because my friend asked me to run the LA half marathon. Initially, I was so against it, but then I thought about it. The half marathon was actually going to coincide with my one year nicotine free anniversary. So then I thought to myself, how cool would it be to actually achieve completing a half marathon, knowing that something like that would not have been possible unless I had quit smoking. So that really became the driving force for me to want to train and complete this race. And through the process, I completely fell in love with running. And now I am training for a full marathon that is literally nine days away. And that's where all this began. Before we get into the tips, I do want to thank today's sponsor, Beyond Yoga. I am so excited to be partnering with Beyond Yoga because I have been wearing their pieces for many years now. You might be familiar with their space dye fabric. It is so buttery soft, so comfortable. And now they just launched a brand new collection with a brand new fabric called Power Beyond. This is their high intensity sports fabric. Power Beyond is what I'm wearing when I'm strength training. It's designed to sculpt, support, empower your every move. And it's also sourced from Blue Sign certified fabric mills. So I'm I'm actually wearing the Strive crop tank and I also own the leggings in black, which is a part of their core collection, along with two seasonal shades, pink energy and marine blue. If you are familiar with their space dye collection, I would say that collection is really great for your low impact workouts, whereas the Power Beyond is gonna be really amazing for your higher intensity. This fabric feels incredible on the body. It has a four-way stretch and it has a perfect amount of compression and durability without feeling too constrictive. I've been loving these sets for my strength training days and even for my track runs. I also wanna show you guys their light cardio cropped pullover. <sighs> I am obsessed with this. I have worn this on my runs and I love that I don't overheat in this. Typically in the morning it's pretty cold so I want a little bit of a cover up but then I get really hot on my runs. This I can run with and it is just so breathable. It's very lightweight. There's thumb holes, an open back. And I find that this works really well as a base under my running vest. If you're already a fan of their space dye fabric, then you're gonna love this one too. Right now, they're offering my viewers 20% off your order with my code SOFIA20. As always, the link will be down below and thank you to Beyond Yoga for sponsoring this video. All right, for starters, I just wanna address the people who experience a lot of anxiety when it comes to working out. Whether you feel self-conscious about your body or maybe you have a fear of other people judging you, you have got to get out of your own head. Yes, it might feel scary. Yes, you might feel a little bit of discomfort, but you gotta welcome that because truly that is how you grow. I know it's so much easier said than done, but you just have to try. And if that means you go out for a run and you're wearing something really loose, covered up, maybe you throw on a hat, some sun 
sunglasses, go incognito, do whatever it is you gotta do, but just take that first step out the door and commit. I promise you whatever is going on in your head, it is 99.9% .9 not true. It is highly unlikely for someone to judge an individual working on themselves, doing something good for their body. You've really gotta release all of that noise and go out there and kill it. The key thing you wanna do when you're just starting off as a beginner runner is to go slow and steady. In the beginning, you do not need to worry about speed whatsoever. You just wanna get your body familiarized of the motion of running. There is no need to exert all your energy and just gas yourself out. That will discourage you. So you just wanna start off at a very comfortable, slow and steady pace. This pace I'm referring to is called zone one. You should be able to have a full on conversation and not feel out of breath. And the reason the reason why you want to move your body in this slow and steady pace is because the longer you do that, what you're basically doing is you're building your aerobic base. And when you build your aerobic base in that zone one cardio, eventually you'll realize you'll start to get a little bit faster. You can go a little bit further. And this is because your body is now familiarized with being in the zone one cardio. So over time, you're using less effort, which then makes running feel a lot easier. If however, you find it difficult, then try intervals where you would walk for one minute, run for three minutes, walk for another minute, run for another three minutes. Once you feel really comfortable in that zone one pace, then it's time to start bringing in zone two. When you're in zone two, I would say you're able to say a few words when you're running, but you can't hold like a deep combo. Just a casual run in the rain. <laughs> it's pouring more. It's literally pouring. I don't know how I feel about this. <laughs> At that point, I think it would be really great for you to try and challenge yourself. So maybe that looks like a three mile run. And then you should try to run three miles at that zone two pace. Again, in zone two, you can't maintain a conversation, but you can get a few words in. So this next section of tips I wanna talk about is how to prevent injuries. One of the most common ways people get injured is by increasing their mileage too quickly. Right at the beginning of my half marathon training, got a little bit too ambitious. I went from running four miles and I jumped to eight miles. There was so much pain on my left knee. I was out for like a month, okay? I couldn't train, I couldn't do anything. A good rule of thumb is you don't wanna increase your running mileage or time more than 10% from week to week. This will really help mitigate the risk of injury, especially if you're just getting started. Because let me tell you, that is the number one thing that will completely change your trajectory for your running career. Strength training is essential for runners because it strengthens your muscles and joints, even the soft tissues like your tendons, which not only helps to decrease the risk of injury, but it also improves your running technique and your running speed. I noticed a huge difference in my running once I started to incorporate more single leg workouts to really strengthen my legs. And the last tip I have for preventing injuries is just to warm up, do a proper warm up. I know it's not the most exciting thing. It gives your muscles and your bones and your joints a chance to just loosen up while you're also gradually building up that heart rate. You know, that's really key just to make sure you're feeling nice and loose before you tackle um, whatever run you're doing for the day. So when it comes to recovery, for me, there's two parts to this. Obviously the physical aspect to it, you wanna make sure you're getting a good night's rest so that your body can fully recover. There's also things you can do to help speed up the recovery process, whether that's hitting up a sauna, doing a cold plunge, and if you don't have access to that, even just taking cold showers or icing really helps. And then there's the mental recovery. We put a lot on our bodies. And while running can definitely feel like a stress reliever, I like to make sure I'm keeping myself in a strong, positive state of mind through meditation. It helps to keep me grounded, gives me the chance to really listen to my body, and it sets me up for a great night of sleep. I've mentioned this before, but the app that I use is called Headspace. It's great because they have tons of short meditations I can use right before bedtime. I'll link it down below if you guys wanna try it out for free for 60 days. But if you are someone who's looking to do longer distances and maybe you wanna eventually run a half marathon and then a full marathon, consistency is key. And honestly, I think the best way to get your feet wet and just commit is to sign up for a race. It can be a 5K, a 10K to start, but there's something about paying money for that ticket that makes it so much more legit and you just start to take your training a lot more seriously. I know that happened for me. So if you're willing to challenge yourself, I think 
signing up for a race is a great start. It really allows you to kind of work towards something. If you're someone who does not want to set up a running schedule for yourself, then you can look into your local running clubs and join one. This is also really great if you hate running alone. I started running with KRC about a month ago and they actually have a 14 week marathon training program that includes a mix of easy runs, track nights for interval runs and long runs. They really have it all laid out for you. I find it really helpful to be able to follow a training program that's preparing me for an actual marathon on top of my existing gym schedule. Plus, there's something really nice about just being surrounded by like-minded people. I find it really inspiring to be around that kind of energy. I am training for a full marathon, so this is kind of what my week looks like. On Mondays, I take a speed class where we do a mix of high intensity cardio. This class really helps to improve my VO2 max. The higher your VO2 max, the more oxygen the body can utilize during exercise. So for runners, you'll be able to maintain a higher intensity for longer periods of time. Tuesdays are for lower body, anything from standing leg curls, hip thrust, barbell squats, weighted split squats, sled pulls, tibialis raise, any type of glute or leg workout that is going to help strengthen our runs, we are doing on Tuesdays. Wednesdays is usually track night for intervals, and this is usually at marathon pace, so the effort feels quite hard, like an eight out of 10. Then on Thursdays, I do another speed class that's very similar to my Monday workout with a mix of high intensity cardio. And then sometimes in the evenings, I will do an easy five mile run. And what I mean by easy is that kind of zone two run. Friday is either a rest day or I'll do another easy run maybe like three miles depending on how my potty is feeling that week and this is something i've learned over time when you're in that luteal phase like the week before your period i've had to learn to just tune in and listen to my body so that is why i leave the friday kind of open depending on where i'm at with my cycle and like i mentioned saturdays are for my long runs long runs can be anything from 10 miles to 20 miles and on sundays we are resting baby okay there is no issue if and buts about it. So this has been my current training split. Keep in mind, we all have different goals. My goal might be to complete a marathon and someone else's goal might be just to incorporate a little bit of running every day for their cardiovascular health. Whatever it is, I think it's helpful to identify what your goals are with running because that will help you understand what type of training you need to be doing in order to reach that goal. If you're a beginner runner, you do not need any of this stuff, you guys. It really is just the icing on top, but you gotta make sure you have your foundation first. So the only thing I would recommend is just investing in a good pair of running shoes and all of this stuff can come later. So I have three different running vests. Two of them are from Solomon. I love Solomon vests. However, I've experienced chafing here on my neck and also my rib cage. So now when I wear these two, I'm wearing a long sleeves or a t-shirt. Overall, really do love Solomon vests. They both come with a soft flask that you just fill up with water, which is really nice to be able to have water on your longer runs. Really, I like these vests because they have a zipper and my things just feel secure. Then I have one vest from On. I would say out of the three, this vest is the softest. I've never experienced any chafing. It is almost the perfect vest. However, it does not have zippers. It has pockets. But because there's no zipper closure, I'm constantly like checking to make sure I have all of my things. If it wasn't for that, this would be like the perfect vest. This also came with two soft water flasks. It's just enough to hold my essentials. It has one small zipper closure here. And this is where I put my key, whoops. So my car key fits perfectly there, which is great. Sunglasses, I have one pair from Oakley. These are the EV Zero Blades. Let's try it on for you. They're super lightweight. I like Oakley glasses because they come with different nose attachments. The one that I have on is made for a low bridge fit. So it's perfect for people with higher cheekbones. My only complaint with these is I wish it was a little bit tighter here. It's almost a little too loose, but comfort wise, 10 out of 10. I wanna quickly go through my shoes. Right now I have three shoes that I use in rotation and I have one pair on the way that are not here yet. So these are my 
my New Balance Rebel V4s. Just got these not too long ago. It's very lightweight, but I wanted a shoe that does not have a plate because most of my running shoes are plated. These are really great just for my easy runs. If I'm doing a three to five miles, I'm gonna wear these. Then we have my On Cloud Flow 4s. I have put so many miles on this. This is the only shoe I trained in for the half marathon because I didn't know you needed a different type of shoe for a different type of run. And if you're a beginner, it really doesn't matter. So that's what I'm telling you. All of this kind of came later. I really fell in love with these because of how lightweight they were in comparison to like any other running shoe I've had in the past. I believe this has a nylon plate. I still like these and I bring these out for my tempo run or track nights. Yeah, I don't know. These are like kind of sentimental for me. I'll probably keep them forever because I ran my first real race in these. I know I just mentioned that I have another pair of trainers coming in and it's the New Balance Super Comp trainers. They are plated. It's just a shoe that you can put a lot of miles on and also do uh, long distance runs. And so I'm really looking forward to receiving those. As far as my race day shoes, I am going to be wearing the Alpha Fly Next Percent threes. I recently got these and I tested them out. It's super important to test out all of your gear before race day. Very happy to say that I love these so much. These are extremely lightweight. The upper is very breathable. It's almost sock light. If you can see here, it has a full length carbon plate. So you get really good energy return. It has a stack height of 40 millimeters at the heel and has an eight millimeter drop. So a 32 millimeter height at the forefoot. I'm just really excited to run the full marathon in these. So these are my race day shoes and I love them. To track my runs, I use my Apple Watch. I have the Series 6. I do have the cellular with GPS so I can stream all of my music without my phone, which is really nice. For nutrition, I wanna cover mainly two things that I think are the most important for long distance runs, and that is energy gels and electrolytes. The electrolytes I use are from Element. These have 100 milligrams of sodium, 200 milligrams of potassium, and 60 milligrams of magnesium. It's so important to stay hydrated when you're running. You need electrolytes, and whether that's in a natural form of coconut water, or even just taking water with some Celtic salt, that that's really good, but I really love the element. This is a watermelon flavor. I love the spicy chili flavor. That's really nice too. And for energy gels, I landed on Martin gels as my current favorites. And the reason is because the texture is really gel-like, whereas all the other gels that I've tried are very thick and clunky, and it's just not pleasant trying to get that down while you're on a very hard run. I have the gel 100, caffeine 100, so it's 25 grams of of carbs and 100 milligrams of caffeine. And then I also have the gel 100, which is only 25 grams of carbs. For supplements, I'm currently only taking two things. And the first is AG1. If you follow me on Instagram, I always talk about this, but I truly take this every morning with water. It covers all of your nutritional needs. It's like your multivitamin, your probiotic, your prebiotic. It supports gut health and just lots of great benefits. So take this on an empty stomach. And then in the evening, I take my magnesium glycinate. This brand is called Pure Encapsulations and magnesium glycinate is really great for bone health and it improves your sleep. So really great for recovery, so essential. Highly recommend this one. I will leave all the links down below. I hope you found this video helpful and I really hope that this inspires you to start your own running journey. Running has truly become so therapeutic. It has given me clarity. It has strengthened me as an individual. The fact that we're even able to run is such a privilege. And every day I just thank my legs and my feet for its capabilities. It really is such a blessing. Feel free to tag me in your stories. I wanna see you in action. I wanna be there to support you. Thank you all so much for watching and supporting me. I really appreciate it and I will see you very soon. Bye.